Hey there guys and welcome once again to the PCBSD YouTube channel. My name is Joshua Smith and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a little featurette on a uh, application called KDE Connect. Now KDE Connect is a very cool little um, program that was written by Albert Vaca as a Google Summer of Code project. Uh, I believe it was in 2013. Um, but what this program will do is it allows you to uh, use your phone as a remote control um, to do various cool little things on your desktop. You'll be able to uh, ping your desktop, you'll be able to control your uh, music, um, you can basically adjust the volume, fast forward, go to your next mp3, etc, etc. Um, also be able to do some cool things. Uh, one of the coolest features being that you can actually use your phone as a touchpad and move your cursor around um, and navigate it just as if you were using a mouse. So um, we'll just get right into it. I'll show you guys basically uh, uh, from start to finish what we're going to do is we're going to install the package um, and then we are going to just kind of go through real briefly how to set it up since there is a little bit of configuration necessary. So anyways, let's get right to it. First thing we're going to do is we are going to go to the App Cafe and we are going to go ahead and just let this open up. All right, great. So we're going to go over here to Browse for Apps. And you'll see KDE Connect is right here, but I'm going to go back to the home page and show you guys how to find it. Most app cafes are going to be set up to not have raw packages selected. So if you do a search right now for KDE Connect, you're not going to find it and you're going to say, well, what the heck? You know, I saw this video showing that it's available. What you need to do is you need to go up here to browser view and select raw packages and then boom, there it is. It just kind of appears. So KDE Connect is a raw package, so just make sure that's selected. Great, okay. And now we can just click the install now button. Are you sure you want to install this application? Yes, we are. So we're going to go ahead and press yes. Give it just a few moments here to uh, go ahead and install this. Give it just another few moments. Okay, great. Now we can see that the package is installed now, so we should be able to use it. Now, we can go ahead and close out App Cafe. We shouldn't be needing that anymore right now. And so if we go down here, and go to System Settings, you see right here, KDE Connect is there. All right, now it sees my phone, but right now it's not paired. Um, it has been paired in the past, but at the moment it's not paired. So um, this is going to show you just some of the cool things you can do right here with KDE Connect. A lot of really interesting things. Not all of these work yet on PCBSD, but the majority of them do. So uh, do, do check out uh, the KDE Connect through the system settings control panel. All right, now before we're going to be able to actually pair the phone, um, there's one very important step that we need to do. Um, in fact, if you don't do this step, it just will flat out not work. Um, you'll basically have the application on your phone searching and searching, but it's not going to be able to find it. Uh, what we need to do is we need to go into the pfsense config file, which is pf.conf, and we need to add a few lines, uh, basically of ports to allow for KDE Connect. So. Let's go ahead and let's see here. I'm actually going to go into my console here on my other screen, so just bear with me for just a moment, guys. All right, and here we go. Here's our console. And I'm going to type sudo kate slash etsy slash pf dot conf. So there you guys go, let you guys see that for just a second. And what this is going to do is this is going to open up the Kate 
uh, text editor for me and I'm going to be editing the pf.conf file. Okay, there we go. Great. So, if you look down here at the bottom, guys, this is what we're looking for, is these four lines at the bottom, line 53 through 56. You can see right here it says pass in quick on EM0 proto UDP from any to any port, and then it has the port numbers we need to allow, and then keep state. Um, the only thing that you guys may need to change is whatever network adapter you are using, you're going to want to change right here, where it says EM0. Say you're using WLAN0 as your network adapter, then you're going to want to actually change that to WLAN0. So just make sure you do have that set, um, and, and everything should be fine. After you're done editing and you've added these four lines, oh, and by the way, I will add these four lines in the description below uh, the video. So if you need to just copy and paste them, just look there and I'll have them for you. So after we're done here, we'll go ahead and save the file. And we can close out pf.conf. Hey guys, quick note, um, look below in the description, you do need to actually do an extra step, which is restarting the PF firewall, so don't forget to look below and do that step. Okay, great. Now, we need to do a couple of things with our phone, it won't take long at all. So if you'll go ahead and get your Android enabled device, and open up the Google Play Store, go ahead and click on the magnifying glass to do a search and look up KDE Connect. And there we go. The first option is KDE Connect by Albert Vaca. So let's go ahead and select that and install. We'll give it just a little bit of time here. Okay, looks like it is installed. So we can go ahead and open the application here on our Android smartphone. All right, now as soon as you open it, um, there's not a lot of options, but you will see there's a refresh, a couple of arrows that kind of designate um, to refresh. So if you don't see your device under not pair devices, go ahead and push the refresh button and you should see your not paired device. If your device still isn't showing up at this time, a good idea would be to go ahead and log out um, of your uh, desktop environment and log back in. There may, be, um, there may be a step that has to be done for you. It's all automatic, but you have to at least log out of your desktop environment and log back in, or just restart your computer if that's easier for you. But at any rate, after you do that, you should see your PCBSD computer under not paired devices, which I do. I see Josh at PCBSD-7274, which is my PCBSD system host name. So I'm going to tap that with my finger, and it says device not paired, request pairing, which I'm going to do. And you'll see on my screen over here, as soon as I pressed request pairing on my phone, it popped up there and said pairing request from LG G2. I'm going to go ahead and press accept. And there we go. You should be all paired. There we go. For some reason, I had to do it a second time. The first one timed out for some strange reason, but I just did it again, and it worked just fine. So if that happens to you, just try again. <laughs> All right, anyways, so now that we're paired, go ahead and show you guys just a couple of things that I can do here. All right, if I want to send a ping just to make sure it's connected, send ping. You can see from my phone, I did receive the ping, so we are communicating. How about let's go ahead and uh, open our remote control. And uh, let's see if we can play some music here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press play. All right, 
now you'll see in Juke, the music is actually playing. If I want to fast forward, I can. You'll see it jumping ahead. Or go to the next song, I can. Very easily. So, pretty cool stuff, right? All right, anyways, let's put, uh, push the stop button and let's go ahead and minimize that to tray. All right, and the next thing that we can do now is we can open the touchpad control. So, right now, I'm not touching my mouse, I'm only using the touchpad on the remote control function here, on the touchpad control. So if you want to basically do like a left click, you can just tap your screen once and it acts as a left click. There's also a, uh, there's also a button here up in the top right that's just three dots all in a vertical row. If you press that, you can also send a right click or a middle click. So if you do need to send a right click for some reason, um, let's try that here. And there you go, there's your right click. So can't think of any reason to use a middle click right now, but maybe you guys need it. So that option is there. Um, now there's also the keyboard functionality. Now I haven't been able to get the keyboard to work yet. It'll appear on the Android screen like you should be able to type, but that, that part isn't working yet. Um, there is still some development going on for this app and it was just recently ported over. So uh, get, give that just a little bit more time and uh, hopefully we'll have that working for you guys. Okay, great. So now if we go back into KDE Connect under System, you'll see it has a green light here. And it gives you all of your options. It shows it's paired. And we can actually go the other way. We can send a ping to our phone. And a little notification just pops up on the phone says ping. These are also plugins that are installed. You can also turn them off if you wish. Don't have to have them all on if you don't have a use for everything. But you'll see hopefully very soon they're going to have telephony integration. So this is a really, really cool feature that I'd love to see. Um, they already have the option in here, but I, I don't believe it works as of yet. So uh, really cool little program. Just wanted to show that off to you guys, though, let you kind of play around with it perhaps. Um, we are going to be doing little videos like this more often, hopefully just to show you guys some of the cool software that's available on PCBSD. Uh, that you may not be able to find otherwhere, or you just may not know it's on PCBSD. So um, at any rate, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again. Bye.